What is up, everyone? JD here. Hope you're doing well today. I'm really excited to do my full review of the Wee Nas Orpheus. Let's get into it. All right, what we're gonna do today is the same routine we do all videos. We're gonna look at some other knives to compare from profile comparison. We will check the weight, and then we're gonna jump into my thoughts and impressions on the Orpheus. Let's kick it off with some size comparisons. Here it is against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see this is 100% a full-size knife, and here it is against the Spyderco Shaman. Um, it's actually coming in just a skosh longer than the Shaman, but it's, it's still what I would say is very comparable to that Shaman. Let me go ahead and grab a budget knife here is the medium-sized Miguron Moriaro. I really like this knife, my budget knife of the year for 2023. You're getting a lot for your money with that one. And then another Wee Knife company is Civivi, which is the sister? I wouldn't call it the sister, right? It's Wee's the parent company. There you go. Uh, the Civivi Vision FG. And the Orpheus is actually coming in larger than the Civivi Vision FG, which I do consider a full-size knife. Let's check out the profile on this one. Um, the Vision FG is a little bit thicker of a pocket knife overall, even without the chamfering there. And again, I'm just trying to hold it from sliding too much because I don't want to scratch up the knives on purpose it's going to happen but you can see there the uh the wee orpheus forgot the name of the knife for a second is a little bit thinner than the vision fg and then when you look past the chamfering there you can see these are very comparable in thickness over here but that chamfering does make this feel a little bit skinnier in hand now this is an integral knife so it probably is going to come in over four and a half ounces Maybe not. You know, they did a pretty good job with the weight reduction on this one. Um, 4.3. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I, I figured with the extra material it was going to be heavier, but we did a really good job on this one. So I'm just going to kick it off right out the gate. This is my very first premium integral interaction period um, i've seen other integrals at shows and things of that nature didn't really handle them and i did handle the kaiser brat which is an integral g10 but that's a very different manufacturing process than doing it with an all titanium premium pocket knife so all titanium handle you have a couple of inlay options they have the fat carbon and then they have the alum is it the aluminum carbon fiber let me just double check that real quick uh the uh, aluminum yeah aluminum foil carbon fiber and then the copper carbon fiber which are the cheaper of the options but we'll circle back to price here in a second i don't want to start there um ergonomically uh it is a little bit of a tight fit when you choke all the way back you know, it for me um i am able to get all four fingers off on it but you can see i hang a little bit over the back with the pinky um, when i'm holding back for like those power cuts and i know you see that four finger choil but that four finger choil for me is not this most secure grip this is the most secure grip um, that forward finger choil is more detailed i did test it and i'll do my best to throw that b-roll footage on right here um, but i did test against some cardboard i am planning for future videos to bring that cardboard up here so i can just do it at the time of the review and uh, the satin finish when you're going just across the cardboard it, it it glides through like I'm not even kidding I can't tell you um, here just how well this glided through the blade stock on here coming back to the video um, here from the b-roll I hope <laughs> if I planned this right very thin blade stock this thing is super super slicey and uh, again in those power cuts I found like this is the best grip here um, I do like kind of let the index finger land on the uh, flipper tab just a little bit there and then what I have just you know I'll rest my thumb directly against the knife like in this position and I'm able to go through those cuts without I had at least with the cardboard I was using I had no issues with it landing in the four choil and then just a couple of like cuts really quick on some paper here and I haven't tested it 
um, since cutting that cardboard, oops, sorry, uh, in the garage. And again, I, I do plan to move that up here. It's just real estate up here is a little bit uh, tough right now. But just the detailed cut and, um, yeah, the factory edge feels exactly the same as it did out of the box, guys. This thing is super – it got great geometry. Uh, the satin finish on here, the hand rub satin finish is really well done, and I think it just adds – on top of the geometry, just how slick it gets going through material. Now, this is just demonstrating the factory edge. Sorry, I bent the paper up there when I was heading into it. This is just demonstrating, uh, and this is not even the factory edge. The factory edge, uh, well, it's still the factory edge, but it's not a factory fresh edge, I guess is what I mean, I mean to say here. Uh, would have been when I pulled it out of the box. I just, you know, I took a piece of cardboard. I just wanted to see how it moved through the material. Um, this probably, to me, would be an EDC knife, but it wouldn't be the one that I would go into the knife case and grab when I was ready to break down, you know, a bunch of cardboard. But I had no reservations about breaking down an Amazon box and throwing it in the recycling bin. Um, no issues there whatsoever. Now, let's get back to the knife. There's a lot here to talk about. So ergonomics comfortable in the um for me it was comfortable in this position it does kind of contour around the finger a little bit here when i choke up and by choking up i'm able to get the pinky all the way in so this this to me was was comfortable i do feel a little bit of the jimping on the inside of the finger there i won't lie but it wasn't a major issue for me and then choked up here for the detail this is like a locked in position for me um, I was surprised because I wasn't sure how it would work out. And most of the time with uh, Wii and Civivi, their Ford finger choil is just a first finger, a first knuckle choke up point for me. I have, again, the larger hands. So medium to large hands, you may be able to get that full finger in there. Um, a little bit of a hot spot here because it's so thin, but it's not so bad that I would complain about it. You know, for intermediate use, I would say, you know, when you're, uh, you know, I keep saying, you know. When you're using this, like every day, breaking down a box or two, something like that is not going to bother you. But if you're, you know, whittling or doing something long term, it'd probably be uncomfortable. Uh, it's just a little sharp here because it's so thin in the geometry. I would, I'd probably say for your whittling, it's probably better to just get into this grip here, locked in and, and go to town here. And this is comfortable like this. I could probably do all day. Pinch grip for detail work. Um, I found like for me getting into the packages and doing utility cuts, this was the position. I was surprised how much the clip point dropped down to where I was able to use this comfortably without having to like contort. Uh, I, you know, this right here is just fine. And then, you know, getting into the packages, I found again, the uh, trigger pull grip worked best for me getting into like my Amazon box etc. I love the micro milling on here. Lots of details going on here for, for what you're seeing on the integral. So you got milling lines all across the back here on the chamfer. And then on the chamfer on the inside here, you have it all across as well, which does kind of help with the grip a little bit. You, you are kind of locking in a little bit. It's not aggressive and it's not fantastic, but between the contouring locking you and this micro milling, it's really well done. It does have slightly proud inlays, but they, they did a good job chamfering it. It doesn't feel hot at any point, and there's no like aggressive points on here. They rounded it so that it was comfortable and not hurting at all. I love that they did this as well with the pivot. There's no branding. The branding is very small here and very faint on the pocket clip, which works well. I've had this in and out of the pocket a bunch since I picked it up. I like that a lot. They even integrated a lanyard hole in here. Um, I think it would look better without it personally, just like the flat scale going all the way across, but it's okay. I, I don't mind it at all. Um, it doesn't really prioritize, in my opinion, with the, the design of the knife and the pocket clip and how it matches the curving here. I don't feel like it's prioritizing it to be too obtrusive, in my opinion. Access to the lock bar, a little snug for me coming in from the side with the larger hands, but I can get to it 
fairly regularly for you know my fidgeters out there without it being a major concern i do like the lift up a lot i can really get in there easily and just disengage the lock and i'm really surprised by that and then the slide over i would probably say is equivalent to the push uh, for the disengagement the fuller at first i thought it was going to be like a low down fuller but i realized this is more like a spidey flick hole and you want to get right up where those speed holes are and it and it works really good guys great detent very snappy great sounds too check out these sounds Great sounds. I really like the way this one sounds. Um, it's got a unique crisp click to it, and I like that a lot. Jimping on the flipper tab is really well done. It goes all the way around. So if you like to push button, you got jimping to grip onto. If you like to light switch, you got jimping to get onto. Um, I, I've said this repeatedly. We Civivi Sincut, they do the best flipper tab jimping combo in the game. Anything that I've ever checked out doesn't compare to what they've done here they've got it nailed down they don't need to change anything about it it is not obtrusive it's a good size flipper tab um, plenty of real estate and then the jimping just makes it super grabby and i love that about it d10 again dialed perfectly for both you know that's a light switch um a light light switch and you know just a a very mild reverse flick um it's a little hard to come off the blade because of the type of fuller it is but the detent holds and grabs enough for it to snap out and then the action so smooth and so broken in and just uh you know eight or nine days i think i've had with this one and it's it broke in quick guys like it is butter 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 i mean i mean it's good they did a really good job with this one that hand rubbed satin finish is a nice touch on top of that uh, i really can't tell you how surprised i am by this knife and how much i like it i know people are going to say eh, 20 cv and eh, titanium that's all they do i understand that's all they do but they decided to commit to doing a really good job with that combination so you're getting top level steel premium materials and they're focusing on getting it dialed in and they keep getting better and better and their offerings they're listening and looking at what's popular and what people want and the fat carbon um, this is lightning anno it's it's not timascus it's so small though that I really don't care in this instance. I haven't really liked like the Xiphius and the other one that has the big lightning anno back piece, that clamshell piece. Um, not really for me. This is okay. Like this, I'm fine with. I'm I'm content with. I think it actually looks good in this instance. Here's where I think people are going to get hung up. So. Uh, let me pull my my website back up just so I quote this correctly. So to get the aluminum foil carbon fiber inlay which is beautiful and it's slightly bronzed it's not it's not the natural titanium finish or the um this finish here it, it's a little bit more bronzed looking um in the picture it may actually look like this titanium in in person but with the aluminum carbon fiber and still the hand satin belt finish um, and then instead of the lightning anode, it just has an anodized pivot collar. That one's coming in at 382.50. So it's roughly about, let's see, it's roughly about $50 more than your typical limited edition Wii knife using, I think the Xiphius, I think was like 330 or 350, somewhere in there. Um, I think it was around 330 or 340, honestly. And you're getting an integral. And it is more expensive to make the integral. The machining is a little bit different. I think it's a really good price point, um, in my honest opinion. And then to get the fat carbon with the lightning anno, which it is more expensive, um, the price is a bit more premium when you're getting the fat carbon and the um, camo carbon inlays. It is a little bit more premium, you know, $399.50. I think is a good asking price, considering that most integrals, when you look at um, 
I'm thinking of Vero's integral. I can't think. Is it the isotope? I think that there is their integral. I think that's almost 500 bucks. Um, I think. I, I'll let my editor correct me because I don't want to look that up right now. I don't know if it's on their website. Actually, nope. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now because I, I would like to talk about this because people are getting, I think, too hung up on what's going on here. Um, yeah, the isotope. Let's see if it's on their website, guys. Um, I want to say the isotope is their integral. I think, yeah, the isotope, Vera Engineering isotope integral. Um, yeah, so their starting price uh, for what looks like the basic, the cheapest one I can see on there is five thirty-five for the Wii isot. I mean, the I'm sorry, the Vero isotope, where the cheapest one that you can get of the Orpheus is coming in at three eighty-two. Uh, let's call it 383 instead of the change. So 535 down to 383. Now, that, again, that's just to give context on here. I know it's not a cheap knife. Um, I know it's expensive. And full disclosure, I went over to White Mountain Knives and used my discount code and got it for 360. I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it was around 360 bucks. Um, and I'm trying to remember, actually, I might have redeemed some points. My point being is I got it even a little bit less than that. My only complaint on this knife is that it's a little off center. It is, it is barely noticeable guys, but it is just a skosh off center. It, it favors the show side ever so slightly. I don't know if you'll ever, if you can tell I'm about to move it now. So just that little bit of movement has it dead center. And again, I don't know how much it'll show. Um, and when I let off, it just move o moves over ever so slightly. And, and I'm going to have the hardest time getting it to show up on camera. That's how minor it is. Um, that's my only complaint about it. I like it. I think for 380 bucks to get an integral 20 CV hand rub with uh, aluminum or copper carbon fiber inlays and a dies pivot collar and the manufacturing, it's not like it's just the titanium. You know, they did micro milling. They did a little bit to make it a little bit more dressed up um, and it feels special and it feels different. Now, what I've never done before is I've never disassembled an integral knife. I didn't do the brat because it wasn't mine. Um, and I am not going to lie. <laughs> I'm a little anxious, uh, a little nervous about trying to do this one here. So we're going to do, we're going to take this apart because I did want to talk about this. It is a very interesting construction. The lock bar is an onlay. So it's a steel onlay that lays on top of the titanium. It's reversed from what it normally looks like. And then this little over travel stop is a one piece that has very hard faint uh, transition lines that's hard to see. I do want to take it apart and clean it and lube it anyway. I definitely recommend it does feel a little bit more shallow than it typically is from Civivi like the... Um, body or the not the body screw the lock bar insert screw and the pocket clip screw are their typical depth they have a little bit of depth to them um, this feels very shallow in comparison so definitely make sure you got good bits or a fresh bit here to make sure that you have good access to it it did back out on me and i did try to you know find that balance but when i went to tighten it um, i usually over tighten a little bit and when i did it popped out so i went and got a fresh bit just to make sure that that didn't happen but we're about to jump in here and uh we're gonna see what this looks like we're gonna find out together i have not touched it to take it apart i have no idea what this is gonna look like um how it's gonna come apart if it's gonna come all the way apart you know we'll find out together uh so very clean got a little bit of oil underneath of there which i actually do like that just so it's not scraping um and then I don't know if this part just lifts out, if it takes a little bit of work to get it out, if you got to disengage here. Uh, I have no idea. So I'm just going to push through the other side and see if this just slides out. Uh, let's do it this way. Okay, so uh, both, it looks like the this piece here looks like it popped up a little bit when I push that out. Um, 
can't quite reach through to the other side. Let me grab, I'm gonna grab something just a little bit smaller and I'm gonna lift up on the lock bar and try to push it out the other side. Yeah, it goes right out. No issues with it going out. Gosh, I hope this goes back together, okay? <laughs> Never done one like this. Um, let's see here, does it just slide out? No, it doesn't wanna just slide out. It's definitely getting hung up. Uh, let's see if this pops out easily. I'm gonna, oh, it does feel like it wants to start going. Okay, so the Lightning Anno Titanium pivot collar on the other side dropped out. I'm gonna set that to, a side, to the side to make sure that I don't damage it. Um, it has a little, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but to keep the um, pivot collar from moving, it looks like it has a little drop pin in there. And then, I don't know how well it's gonna show, but it has the little notch. I hope you can see that. It has the little notch uh, to keep the pivot from rotating when you're when you're tightening it down so that's nice all right let's see if i can get this out yeah it definitely wants to come out um it's not very easy but that again i think is because of how tight the tolerances are oh man it is very snug guys i'm trying to be careful i don't want to scratch the titanium and I don't want to cut myself. Let me move this out of the way. And, you know, thanks for hanging out with me and sticking it out to see what it looks like. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So, it does have a washer here. This is very interesting to me. It looks like everything can come out from this side. Does it all come out? Oh, man, it looks like it could. Oh no, okay. Oh wow, wait. No, it doesn't slide out. What's going on here? This is interesting. There's like a like a pin or something there. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's snug. I don't know if there's separation. There's like um it looks like it could come up, but it there's like a little over, like a piece that looks like it's over a little bit. Let me grab a flashlight. I'm having a hard time seeing if it's just like oil sitting there or if it's just tight tolerances. Ah, I think I see how this works. Does it spin to the side? It looks like it spins. All right, so I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it looks like there's little notches here to kind of spin this and get this out. Wow, that is very that is very interesting how that is designed. So in here, let's go ahead and move the blade out because it looks like it's meant to come out now. Oh, it is tight, guys. Tight, 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 tight. So I hope I'm able to get that back in there. Um, I think you can kind of tell. There's notches here where it lays in to the scale. This is very interesting. I can see why these are so expensive. And then it spins to come out. And then it looks like the other side is just a, a regular washer. So very interesting. Um, unfortunately, it looks like ceramic balls have fallen out of... Um, and I don't know if that's because of how this is designed, but the ceramic balls have fallen out of the washers. And, yep, um, two of them have fallen out. So, it looks like we are going to see if I can put skiffs in here because these bearing balls have fallen out of these uh, fold-over style um, washers and i'm really hoping that this is not these are really thin guys i might not have these size we might have to cut this video and i might have to reach out to we or see if they have okay so five millimeter that's that's a good thing because that means it could be the uh 364th ball 
that's six millimeter, five one sixteen, three sixteen, five three sixty four. So I think these are going to fit, and I got a bunch of them. So um, let me just double check because I checked here. Oh no, they are. They are 116. They are the traditional 5 millimeter 116, which I only have one set of left. Um, so I am definitely going to have to order that and get that in here. So we're installing skiffs. Uh, I wasn't going to do that, but with these, I don't know if you can see these two. I, I don't know that I have the capability to get those pressed back in there. I may try uh, in the garage later, but we're going to throw my last set of skiffs on here. Man, I hope these skiffs. Uh, are, are good to go. I've had a couple that throw everything off. Uh, actually, let me do this. And, um, you know, actually I have factory, I have factory 364, so I'm not too worried about it. I have three factory 364. I don't need to reach out, uh, to we, you see the bearing came out. I, I don't know if that's just because of the tight tolerances with this one or what this is, but we're going to close this down and put all this away not too worried that those balls fell out but that is why i talk about like why i love the skiff bearings um they work really well i i think they fit nicely there's a little bit of tolerance here let me grab a lube and we'll lube these up and then i'm going to clean everything here on the parts and this should go back in fairly easily, I think. I'm trying to see if I need to do um, the blade, like if I need to put it in there part of the way. And actually, let me grab, because it looks a little dirty down there, but you can see it already has uh, the line for the lock bar insert the detent ball let me see if i can get in here and grab let me push these to the top and then i'll grab one i will have to do a little bit of editing editing to skip some of this let's clean out the detent ball hole yeah it's really gummed up this is just going to make it work even better and while we're here let me Lay that down with that in there. Let me move this over and clean this detent ball and lock bar off the best that I can. And clean off, pivot, all that. Yeah, I love these little things because they, they work so, so well. Um, yeah, so yeah, goes right back together, guys really easy i am surprised how easy that was to put that back in there so we got skiffs in here i'm excited about it now i wasn't sure with the tolerances if i needed to do that or not and uh, i'm kind of glad that the other one had the balls fall out of it um again i've only seen that happen twice before um, but it's not that unusual for it to uh, occur and I'm not too concerned about it, to be completely honest. All right, so I think it's going to be easier to drop this in. And it looks like you, you uh, there may be a tool for this. But honestly, oh, easy there, easy. It's sticking to the, I think my, I think my screwdriver here is slightly magnetized. But it looks like there may be a tool that's used to kind of get this to slide into place and i may end up here regretting <laughs> removing this if i can't get it back in um let's see maybe an angle oh there we go yeah no problem yeah you can definitely use a flathead to get that in there and it looks like yeah it has a stop point so it won't go any further than that and there you go you can kind of see a little bit there where that little notch is man this is really ingenious the way that they made this all right where's my pivot let's clean this off let's throw some fresh lube on it 
I can't wait. I'm excited now with the skiffs because I'm not going to lie. It was already really smooth before. Um, so I can't wait to see what the action is going to feel like. So remember, the one with the little nub on it is the one that you're going to want to put on the other side. So we'll go ahead and flip it over and try to get it to lay with the notch. Let's see. There we go. So it fell right in. No issues. And then let me see if I can find the little C. The little C looks like it goes back towards the back. Dropped right in, guys. Really good build here. I like this a lot. I just heard something fall. What is that? Okay, that's the uh, pivot screw there. So it laid right in. I'm going to lay it back over. I am going to clean this up a little bit here. It's got uh, lube, dirty lube, or it's dirty. So I'm just going to clean the other piece out the best that I can. My fingers are dirty, so I'm just transferring it back. And then I'm going to grab another keyboard cleaner or a circuit cleaner. Circuit board cleaner. I'm just going to clean this all up the best that I can and then we should be done all right let's see here looks like the over travel stop goes this way so we'll drop that back in I think it goes this way I'm not missing nothing I might know all right so oh i bet yeah that makes sense it probably helps it uh to lay back down to have a little bit of lube so it doesn't you know uh fight as much that's probably why there was lube on it you know that makes sense now that i'm thinking about it probably just helps it like slide and drop <laughs> legit just drop in man this is, I'm seriously impressed right now um, with this, and I'm glad I did this, and I hope you stuck through to the end. This is really well machined, and the in, uh, ingenuity that went into this, uh, I'm really impressed. I love this knife. I, I think they did a great job here. Um, I'm not too worried about those uh, bearings that fell out, the balls. That's happened on uh, two Kaisers and now my very first Wii that's happened on and really just not worried about it. I have so many extras of these and they make skiffs and if you reached out to uh, Wii Civivi, I don't think it would be an issue whatsoever for them to send replacements or for you to send it to them. Um, the maintenance on this I think would be really easy to do. Okay. Now I gotta make sure my action's good. Oh yeah, action's good. Locked up, no blade play. Oh wow. Still out of center though. <laughs> Still out of center. So whatever's going on with it has to do with the uh, construction there, which I can get while it's why it's tight. Um, let me just see if I can snug it up a little bit more because it did move some closer to the center. All right, it, it moved a little. Uh, the pivot moved a little, but it is still like a micrometer off. But it, I don't know if you'll be able to tell. It, it, I mean, a micro, a micrometer. It's just a small amount off the centering. It doesn't bother me that much, though. I honestly kind of forgot about it, and I almost didn't mention it. Wow. So that is the uh, disassembly, my very first integral disassembly, and uh, I really dig how they designed it. I got a little bit of oil that popped out there. Um, it's almost seamless how they did that with the over travel stock, guys. This this is really cool. I I dig it. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm sure some of you are going to tell me that it's just too overpriced, and I, I get it. I get it. If you if you're not into the if you're not fascinated i should say if you're not fascinated by the fact that it's an integral piece a one piece construction in the back um, with the exception of how they designed this for the maintenance which man that was 
I was nervous going into it, but it's really, really easy. And I hope that it helps anyone that may have picked one of these up and was looking at it. But uh, just let me know what you think down below. I'm probably just going to trash, trash this. I need to hang on to it, though, because i got to remember to order it. Um, what do you think about the Orpheus? And again, you know, it's coming several hundred dollars underneath the Vero Isotope, which I love Vero's knives. And I think, you know, a best tech manufactured Integral is probably very expensive and he does to have he does need a profit from margin in order to operate so you know i get the price point i just use that as a reference to show that it is really amazing that you're able to get this integral at this price i hope this video was enjoyable and insightful like i think that was the thing i was hoping for the most with this is that it was insightful for everyone that tuned in for it i was very surprised and blown away with how easy the maintenance was because of the ingenuity that went into main the maintenance piece or aspect of it man that was really crazy and I, i'm very excited that i was able to get skiffs installed here they are the standard five millimeter 116th um, really cool and uh, i'll continue to update you guys just tune in onto the lives um, I'll do a little bit of a long term with this one being that it's my first and only integral. I know it's a little bit more expensive than what I like to keep in my inventory. I, I generally don't like to go over $300 to keep a knife um, unless I build it, you know, because the shaman, I think I have more into that shaman uh, than $300. I, I know I do. Sidetracked, I apologize. Shout out to everyone out there that leaves the likes, that comments especially on this video, uses the links and is subscribed. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. And until next time, peace.